This is my photographic guide to my field evidence. And I have pictures of all kinds of things from footprints to deer kills. So this is a seeker hind that I found. This is near Bovington where I know the leopards were active. And so this is where, this is how I first found the carcass very neatly tucked underneath the tree there. Mm. And one can see how it's been stripped and the head itself was was like this typically being licked up by the big cat's tongue and when the head was turned over one can actually see all the trauma around the muzzle where the cat had bitten onto it to suffocate it this is another example this is a fallow buck that was taken near Bewley in the new forest and on this particular animal a lot of the haunch has been taken and again the nose has been damaged it's interesting because this animal was a deformed animal and these are the animals far more likely to be taken by big cats the diseased the weak the old and this fallow buck had only one antler and it was also very small so it was very vulnerable to cat attack and that's what happened and the cat actually removed the rumen that's the big intestine with all the food in it as they often do and it buried it under a bush that was three meters away so this is interesting but interestingly enough we got dna off it but there was no dna of big cats but interestingly other animals another thing that i regularly find oh, sorry why do you think sorry. there was no dna on that one well it was a bit of a scandal because yeah. they picked up um, what happened was the university who was doing the DNA tests come back and they said oh we've got Burmese python and otter how strange do they live in the new forest eating deer and I said well it definitely shows how um, vigorous the DNA testing is in picking up contaminants because it picked up the contaminants on a pair of scissors that I had used in my taxidermy purpose to cut open the body of a Burmese python and then later I used those scissors to cut open an otter so if it can pick up contaminants like that well why on earth didn't they pick up the contaminants in the very least of the animal that was responsible for eating this animal I really do not know why but I think they said there's dog and fox DNA on it and I saw no evidence of foxes or dogs. It was actually in somebody's garden. There was no footprints of dogs or anything. I was convinced that a leopard had done this. It, there was all the hallmarks and everything. But it's one of the commonplace things that happen with these DNA testing. They all come back negative. Even if you send a real leopard poo, it will come back as dog or fox because there really is a conspiracy to hide the truth. Another interesting um, factor to this big cat kills that I find is that leopards and pumas don't just eat deer and rabbits and birds, they eat other carnivals as well. And foxes and badgers, domestic dogs and cats are regularly taken by these animals. And this is an example of a fox that was killed by a leopard in one of my study areas. And as you can see, the animal has basically been halved and almost turned inside out. This is very typical feeding strategy of both leopards and pumas. But it's a shame the snow had laid afterwards because there's no footprints of, of any other animal apart from crows and pheasants. This is another example of an animal that was killed by either a leopard or a puma. This is a roebuck. You can see by its tongue hanging out and its bulging eyes that it died of asphyxiation. And again, it has the same trauma on the muzzle where an animal had clamped it over the nose to suffocate it rather than bite it on the neck, which you would expect for big cats to do. But it's all different. I find many kills where they do have the classic holes in the throat or the back of the neck, but lots of them are certainly like this. And in this case, Again, it's been halved. You can see the ribs have been sheared down by strong carnassial teeth in a typical way in which you would expect a big cat to eat a deer like this. And so how would that carcass look different if a deer had died of natural causes and it had just been eaten by badgers, foxes, 
buzzards, things like that? I've done a lot of research in this. Um, a lot of it comes from the fact that I've used trail cameras over my kills. I've actually baited areas with deer kills in front of trail cameras. And over the years, one can see the methods in which these animals eat, especially the scavengers, such as ravens, magpies, crows, foxes, even otters sometimes come up and eat from the carcasses and stoats and things like that. So we get a good idea in how those animals eat. Um, we also have a good idea of how dogs often kill prey and how they kill them. And if this, if this had been killed and eaten by a dog, well, firstly, they wouldn't have the muscle mark, the muzzle trauma. It wouldn't be asphyxiated. It would have more trauma at the rear end, although uh, the rear end is gone, so we cannot actually see that. But dogs are very messy. Um, they play around. They, they don't kill the animal a lot of the time and they're not eat eaters they're not neat when they're eating they mess it apart they pull it around and it travels over a large distance before it's even dead a lot of the time in this case it's all very neat it's happened in one place the animal um, if it was one animal it could have been a mother and cub for example that have eaten this it's all very neat it's not all pulled around it's very meticulous um, as if the cat knew what it was doing and that's what makes it so different to a typical um, dog kill, for example. Being a taxidermist and I eat roadkill, I'm often looking out on the verges of roads for dead animals. So um, I have always kept my eyes out for a big cat because I knew that there had to be big cats out there with the amount of uh, animals there were. There had to be roadkill. So one day I was out unexpectedly and I just happened to come across the body of an animal um, near Wareham Forest. This is the animal I found and I had somebody else in the car at the time and we stopped and we said, crikey, what on earth is that? That huge dead animal it must be a dog. So we stopped the car in front of it and as soon as we did, there's a, a horde of cyclists that come along. And they were all shouting, cool, look, there's a dead lion. And they all stopped in front of it. And at that point, I got out the car. Unfortunately, my camera that I had only had a long telephoto lens. So I couldn't really take any close-ups. And also, there was tanks moving along the road. So it was really dodgy. But I managed to take one photo of, it, of its head. This animal itself was bizarre because... Although the cyclists will say, look, there's a dead lion, I knew it wasn't a lion. But the odd thing was, was that I could not identify this animal. When I looked at it, I thought, what on earth is that? Is that a cat or a dog? It was about nine feet in length. Its tail was four foot long and really thin. It had a huge torso and its head looked very cat-like. Its teeth looked cat-like, but rather small in relation to a leopard or something. It had dog-like characteristics and cat-like characteristics. It was so bizarre, but it also looked like a snow leopard. It had rosettes all over its body and a lovely sort of frosty colored fur. I didn't know what it was. I thought this was the most bizarre animal I had ever seen in my life because I know animals and I know what they look like. And this was something different, something really bizarre. So anyway, I photographed it and then I decided to come back after a meeting and pick it up. But of course, when I come back from a meeting two hours later, the body was not there. And there was a line of tanks in the road and a digger. So I thought, right, they've obviously removed that body as quickly as possible. So no evidence on that one, I'm afraid, apart from the photograph. It was absolutely bizarre. There's not a hair left on the road for me to pick up. This line here is actually a military line and it's actually 17 centimetres wide. So that should give you an idea of just how large the animal was.